Hey guys, uh, so I thought I would run through kind of a breakdown of one of the particle experiments I've done. Um, there's been a lot of interest in it, so I thought this would be a really nice way to do it And I'm also releasing the this nuke script so you can play around with it um, in nuke X yourself um, Yeah, you can find it on my site compostingpro.com. Uh, it seems to have quite a lot of interest about it So I thought I'd go for it. Okay, so first of what I'm doing is I've got the card plugged in just to an emitter now what I've got on this emitter is some kind of different stuff. You can go for it yourself, but I've got this starting at frame a thousand. That's pretty standard in the VFX industry. Um, I haven't got any velocity on it because I want them to fall, look like they're kind of naturally falling. So what I've done is to make them fall down over time, if I play these, they're just kind of going to build, right? So what I've done is then I've added some gravity. So now they're going to fall down over time and that'll give kind of like a natural feeling um, to those dropping now. And then what I've done is just added some drag. So that's kind of gonna make us they kind of hit a speed and then just kind of stay at that speed. It, it should just kind of bunch them up a little bit. So that's pretty cool. I think that just makes it look a bit more natural. And I've, for some reason I've done another one. Not quite sure I've done that, but I could have just put that, but added that value to that value. But anyway, this is kind of just, I was just mucking around with quick experience with this. This isn't kind of like a uh, the most efficient way of doing this. Again, it's just, I'm just trying to make stuff look cool and just play around with stuff. Um, then what I've done is I've got a sphere over here and plugged it into a particle bounce node. So what this does is you can either choose to bounce um, your particles off an object or you could actually get them to kind of stick to it. You could actually kill them so they just completely disappear. But what I've done is I've, I've got them to bounce and then you can see I've whacked the friction like right up. Um, so there's no bounce and the friction is one on the, on the outward bound and the external bounce and then the internal I've mucked around with that but that shouldn't actually affect it. Um, yeah, and then what I've done is I've then set the ge region here to the geo, where is it? So yeah, I've plugged in the geometry basically, so it's going to then bounce off that, um, or, or stick to it in this case. So now if I play that through, as this drops down, it's then going to stick to that geometry that we've got plugged in. You can see that there, which is kind of cool, right? And then what I've done is just whacked a particle curve in. And that's just changing the color over time. So this this uh, this axis here is just the lifetime, and then this is obviously the amount. So at the start of its life, it's going to have one in the blue, and by the end of it, it's going to have zero. So you can see here the color will change over time. I think that's all I've done. Yeah, just the RGB. So there you go, and you can see the color change there. It's kind of more blue, and then it slowly goes towards purple and lightens up. So. Then what I've done is whacked a vortex in there. That was just to kind of get them landing slightly differently on the sphere. Because um, you'll see in a minute that I don't actually need them moving. Um, and what I could have done now I think about it is I could have just tried to emit some particles from the sphere. So plug that into the emit arrow here. And that would have just made particles kind of come out of the sphere a bit like they were doing on the card. So that might have been a cool result as well. But again, I was just playing around with stuff. Um, so then we've got this. We put our camera in and there you go. That's our particle setup. So there's them all dropping. There's them sticking there. And then I kind of just picked the frame I like, um, which was this one. So this is obviously later on in their life. So that color's changed from blue to kind of a more neutral color. Um, and then what I've done is I've just fixed the depth using these. So what this is doing is it's just doing one divided by the depth. So you get the regular depth. And then this is saying if the pixel is infinite, which will happen where there's kind of no values, um, if where the, pic where the pixel value is infinite in the depth.z channel, that's our depth channel, question mark. If it is infinite, then make the value a thousand. And if it isn't, then make it depth.z. So what that means is when I go to here, so can you see all these places here where there was like no information, it's just gone to infinite. Now if I view this expression, they've now gone to a thousand. So it's just saying, is the pixel infinite? If yes, make it this, whatever value you put here. If it isn't, then do this side of the, Kind of depth.c, keep it the original value. Then I'm doing my Z defocus and I'm making that like ultra kind of like shallow. So can, let's ramp that up so you can see that it's like really shallow. Um, just much around the size and maximum stuff of that. Uh, if you wanted to get a realer one, you could kind of plug a filter in with an image or make them bladed, but again, mucking around. And then I've just removed all the channels I don't want. So this, as you can see, is red, green, blue, alpha, and then we've got depth and motion vectors here. 
and I don't need to use that information anymore. So I've just removed them here. And you can see we don't have those other boxes here anymore. I've just removed them. So what I've done is I've then created a sphere, um, that same sphere that's kind of um, the, the particles are sticking to. I've then just got that here and I'm rendering that out on its own because I was going to treat it differently. Um, I could have put them all in the same scene and rendered that out, but I just kind of wanted them separate so I could, again, play around with it more. I've done the same expressions, frame held on the same frame, and then defocus that. So we get a nice shallow depth of field um, like that. And I think I've j changed the focus between these two because, again, just to give the effect I want. Oh, it looks the same. Awesome. No, I haven't. Uh, and then I've kind of just removed the values again, graded them, and just nudged it down. Um, because I like the render, so I just wanted to nudge it down in 2D and then plus that over. And it's pretty subtle. But you can see here it is there, just on that bit. So then what I've done is just graded it to make it look a bit brighter and cooler. Um, just kind of like a bunch of grayed up nodes and stuff. And these will concatenate, that's why they're in a, in a nice order like that. And then to get the kind of like stems on these, I use the God Rays node. Um, so most people use this to actually do God Rays out of like clouds and stuff, but what you can do is if you go bring this into into kind of like values under one, it starts pulling values in um, towards the center wherever you put this center point. So that's really cool. So you can get kind of like really cool stuff on that. And you can actually animate that if you wanted to. Um, you could set a key on here. So let's just go back to where it was. So and then I've graded those around a little bit, just boosted the kind of like contrast in them and then graded up slightly using the gamma and gain and then plus that over. So there you go, and then you get those kind of cool stems. Then, because that's kind of increased the uh, bounding box, I've just cropped that, and then also kind of like made it a nicer format, and then just whacked a load of grain on it um, as well. So there you go. That was, I mean, it's pretty simple at the end of the day, but it's it's kind of fun setup. And I was mucking around with all of these, like um, putting grade note god rays after each other, so you could then have this one maybe, um, like this for instance, and then you could adjust the center over here. So, and then plus that over maybe. Um, I, was try I was trying all sorts of kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just fun to play around with this. Again, we don't we really uh, do this kind of stuff when you're working on films, right? It's, it's kind of like matching black levels and getting stuff to look cool rather than kind of these abstract things. Um, so yeah, so that's how I made my, uh, my first particle experiment. You can find that on compositingpro.com. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.